Hey, what's up YouTube? Steve Cortica here and I'm going to be talking today about what I think are the easiest altissimo fingerings and also if you struggle with altissimo, one really easy trick that I think will help you produce these notes if it's something you're having trouble with. If you haven't already checked it out, I have a free course online called the Routine Improvement System. And within that course, there's a downloadable PDF of all the fingerings I'm going to show you. They will be on the screen throughout this video, so you'll still have them there as well. But the course is just a great resource to have because it includes a lot of other things for how to continually get better at the saxophone. Let's talk some altissimo. So the first thing that I think is really important in order to produce the notes in the upper register is to realize that there's two important factors that are going to help you produce these higher frequencies. The reed needs to vibrate at a higher rate. So you're going to need to use a little more embouchure pressure to create altissimo note. So that's number one. In general, anytime I'm trying to produce an altissimo note, my jaw is a little bit further forward on the reed, not backwards, but forward. And I'm using a little bit more pressure in order to increase that frequency that's happening. The other factor is throat position. I know that when I go into the altissimo register, I'm not exactly sure why this works or why this makes it work. Maybe somebody can leave that in the comment section that knows the answer to this, but the throat tends to open up when you go into the altissimo register. A way that you can check to see if you're ready to even play altissimo notes before really going to battle with the horn and trying to do overtone exercises and all these things is to just take the neck and the mouthpiece off of the horn and you wanna be able to produce three distinct sounds. The first one is the natural overtone that comes out of the neck and the mouthpiece. The next one is the first overtone or what I consider the most important step in order to be able to reach that altissimo register and this can be created just by using more pressure on the reed. So going back and forth between those two notes What I'm doing to reach that second overtone is I'm putting more pressure on the reed and I'm jutting my jaw slightly forward just a little bit so that my lower lip is a little bit further down on the reed. So that's going to be a really, really important step and can save you a lot of time. If you're able to get that to come out of just the neck and the mouthpiece, when you put this back on the saxophone and you're able to produce that second higher note, Getting altissimo notes to come out, this is going to be an altissimo A. It's going to provide you with what that feeling is supposed to be when you're playing altissimo notes. In order to get even higher and more extreme altissimo notes, there is one more overtone that you can blow on the neck and the mouthpiece, and that sounds like this. And that is created by, again, using even more pressure on the reed and just creating a little bit smaller of an opening with your mouth, but a larger opening with your throat in order to get that note to speak on the neck. If you're able to do this, then great. If you're not able to do this, it's not the end of the world, but it's something that you need to consider getting better at and practicing in order to make altissimo easy for yourself in the future. Getting into the altissimo fingerings, I'm just gonna run through them. There's only two fingerings that are really important to make a difference between on alto and tenor, and that's the F sharp and the G. And I should mention that I'm using the octave key for all of these altissimo fingerings. So for F sharp on tenor, I use one over one very similar to the one over one B flat, but we're using the front F for the left first finger. The alto fingering will work on tenor, but it's going to be on the flat side and it's not something that I recommend using, but you can just play the front F with the side B flat. And it just ends up being a little bit flatter and not great for tenor, but awesome for alto. Moving on to the next note, which is altissimo G. For tenor, it's front F and then just the side B flat. On alto, I would recommend using front F, side B flat, and the F key, just again because it's more in tune on alto, but not on tenor. 
oddly enough, you actually end up playing an F sharp if you do that fingering on tenor. The rest of the fingerings are my favorite for both alto and tenor. Some people might disagree with these and that's fine, but for me, and I think for a lot of people, these end up being just the easiest finger combinations to get these stratospheric notes out and it can lead to playing some really nice lines in the altissimo register. Checking out the G sharp, I like to do two, three on the left hand and two on the right hand and the side B flat. Sometimes we'll get a split note effect from that particular note. Not the end of the world for me. I still think it's the easiest and most practical fingering to use. Next fingering is altissimo A, two, three, one, two, three. That one pops right out on alto and tenor, especially if you've pre-worked out the overtones on the neck and mouthpiece. Next fingering, just press the side D key down for your A altissimo fingering and a beautiful B flat will come out. Next fingering, keep that B flat. You lift everything up except for the ring finger on the left hand. So you just have ring finger, left hand, and side D and key and octave key. That's the fingering I use for a B. A lot of times I like to play the B flat first as like a grace note. Sometimes you'll hear pop players do this when they're going for their high altissimo B because it's a pretty commonly used fingering. The next fingering is to go to C, so you just take that high B and then you put down the E flat key on the left hand. Next fingering is to jump from the side D and E flat keys up to the front E fingering for the high C sharp. A good thing to do to grease up that motion is to go back and forth between the C and the C sharp a couple times. Next fingering is the high D, and I like to use the front F. So coming off of your high front E fingering, which is producing the altissimo C sharp, you lift up your ring finger and you're playing a front F, and that's going to produce an altissimo D. Next fingering is altissimo E flat, and this one really blew my mind when I learned it. That is the same as an open high C sharp. No fingers on the horn, just the octave key. A natural overtone on the saxophone is an altissimo E flat. For my next two fingerings, these are actually overtones of the previous altissimo notes. We're gonna do an overtone of altissimo B and that's gonna be your left ring finger and your side D key. And then for altissimo F, you're just going to do an overtone of the altissimo C. And those are, for me, the easiest altissimo fingerings and the ones I use regularly that help me play lines through the altissimo register. Hope you dug this video and you find it helpful. I'm sure there's other ways to get altissimo notes out and definitely welcome the idea of using some other finger combinations to get a fuller sound in some of these notes. But again, if you're looking for just really easy fingerings that are going to be consistent and reliable, these are the ones for you. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and stay tuned for more sax educational content.